Hello, I'm Chris Menard. Today I'm going to discuss Microsoft Excel. It's a pivot table exercise. I'm going to be worried about dates in this video. I'm going to do this twice. The first time through, I'm going to group by dates, but it's going to just be one year. And notice I have invoice date in column D, and I'm going to summarize the invoice amount. You'll want to summarize most likely something numeric. I could summarize cost. So for example one, I want to point out that the invoice date is all the year 2020 and I do have all 12 months. There is January through December and then I'll do it again, but I'll have multiple years. And that's where it gets a little tricky. Not required, but I've already made my data a table by clicking inside of it and doing control T. I know it's a table because it says table design at the top. That is a contextual tab. If you click outside, it no longer says table design. Click back in it, table design. This video is not about tables, but one of my favorite features of tables is my header row. When I scroll down, it automatically repeats. I don't have to go and freeze panes. So let's go ahead and make this first pivot table. Five clicks, insert, pivot table. It picked up my table, new worksheet. I'm going to click OK. This is the third click. Notice that invoice date, if you recall, was month, day, and year. I didn't have the month in my data, but when I check invoice date, Microsoft Excel is smart enough to throw in the months running down column A. I'm also going to check invoice amount because it's going to be something numeric. So, January through December of 2020, there's my total. I don't normally format the numbers this way in a pivot table, but I'm going to just make them comma style and lose a decimal. So I've got a grand total of 18,417,000 and some change. January was 900,000. I want to do a running total. So I'm going to take invoice amount and drag it and drop it in the values and it's going to repeat the sum of the amount. I need to do a right click. I could also go this go at this another way. Since I'm recording I need you to see this so I'm going to collapse the ribbon. Here's my right click. So I'm right clicking C3. Show values as and I'm hoping it picks this up. It says running totals in. So I want to do running totals. So I want to combine January and February and see the total. So right now there's 2,141. That's February. It's just repeating. But it says running totals in months. I'm going to click OK. Now it's 3 million. It is the sum of B4 and B5. If you look down at the bottom right in my status bar, there is the word sum. Let's test it one more time. Let's do three months. 5 million and some change. 5 million and some change right there. Now, C3 says sum of invoice amount. I'm going to just type over it running totals. That easy to change it. Also, since I have the grand total, because it's going every month, December is the grand total. I don't really need to see grand total in row 16. I'm going to right click A16 and remove the grand total. So there you go. That was just one year. There is running totals in a pivot table. Now let's do multiple years. So it gets a little tricky here. Same thing, I've already got a table. Insert, prove I got multiple years. I'm gonna select invoice date in D1. I got 2019 and 2020. So here we go. Insert, pivot table, still five clicks, hit OK. This time when I check invoice date, I get the years. Now again, I didn't have the years and I also got quarters. Now I'm gonna check invoice amount. So everything's actually correct. I am going to expand the ribbon. Again, this is another tip. If you click on one of the numbers, P 
pivot tables analyze. Here's the here's where you need to be. The word group. This is the group group. Notice it's all grayed out. You actually need to click over in column A on one of the dates. I'm going to ungroup because I don't really care about the quarters. I want to see years followed by months. So I'm going to select ungroup. Now I've got just all my invoice dates running down column A. Now I'm going to hit group selection. I'm going to check years and months already selected. So I'm going to just leave it selected, but I'm telling you, you could unselect it. So I'm going to group by years and months. When I click OK, I should see 2019, January through December, followed by 2020. There we go. So now let's do the running totals again. Again, just so you know this, I really don't need these subtotals sitting here. I don't care about them right now. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to remove the subtotal. I right clicked on cell A4 right on the year and subtotal years, I turned it off. I don't need to see that number right there. Just to show you that again, there's an undo. I don't need to see this number right here. So right click, gone. So here we go again, invoice amount, drag and drop. Again, I'm going to collapse this. Right click, show values as, running totals in. Now, because I've got multiple years, I have either years or invoice date because I've got multiple years. The answer is invoice date. So now when I click OK, I should get in cell C5 the exact same number that's in cell B5 because that's the first month. But in cell C6, I should get the sum of B5 and B6. And there I go. Let's see if it's right again. I highlighted them both. Down in the status bar, I see the 1799739. Anyway, I hope that helps. Feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel and also ring the bell. Coming up tomorrow morning, which will be Sunday morning, I'm going to discuss Microsoft Teams, how to use, under Teams, how to use conversations versus when to use chats, and also how to bold conversation topics. I've got two years of support in bold here. Thank you. Have a great day.